friends, it's great to be here with you as we start our IES Kids Online Training Camp. We've got to be committed. Whew. And getting stronger. Whoa. <laughs> that was an intense training. My energy is drained. Let me catch my breath first. Whew. All right, I'm okay now. Friends, do you know the meaning of commitment? Commitment is about making a plan and putting it into practice. We need commitment if we want to get stronger physically by training our body like what I just did. We also need commitment if we want to grow stronger in our relationship with God. We need commitment for lots of things in life, not just physical fitness. We definitely need commitment in order to grow in our relationship with God. We need to make plan and then put it into practice. This month, we'll talk about some steps we can take that will help us grow in our faith over time. But before we get to that, we have to do something very important as well. Let's sing and worship the Lord. Yay!
Hi friends! As you know, this month we're finding out how God can help us live with commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. It's really important that we make a plan to grow in our relationship with God and then put our plan into practice. Today, we'll talk about a really important part of that plan, hearing from God. We can hear from God by reading God's Word, the Bible. When we read the Bible, we find lots of different kinds of books written by lots of different people. Some of the books were written to tell the history of God's people. Some were written to tell about the life of Jesus. We can also find poems and songs here in the book of Psalms. Some of the psalms and songs of praise to God or songs written to thank God. Other psalms share wisdom. In some psalms, the writer asks God for help during a tough situation. In all of the psalms, we can find amazing truths, not only about who we are, but more importantly, about who God is. For example, Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is actually the longest chapter in the whole Bible. In this psalm, we read how God's words are sweeter than honey and more valuable than silver or gold. And in verse 105, we read this. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It's like a light that guides me. Wow. Let's think about that for a second. God's words are like a light that guides us through the darkness. God's words can help us make wise choices. Have you ever been riding in a car or maybe a taxi or a bus at night? If you have a light, you can see which way to go. But without it, riding at night will be very dangerous. That's what it's like when we read God's Word, the Bible. The Bible is like this light that shows us which way to go. It shows us how to make wise choices when things around us might seem dark or confusing. Maybe that obstacle in the road is like something that happens in your life. Maybe a friend says something that makes you mad. If you don't stop and think, you might say something mean back. And that would be like driving right into the pothole on the road. You might really hurt your friendship. But God's word, the Bible, can show us what to do. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. We can keep our friendship strong if we choose to be kind and forgiving. Imagine if you have a little sister and your little sister keeps asking you to play with her and you really don't want to. You could easily snap at her and say something that hurts her feelings. But then you remember what you've read in James 1.19 that says, everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. We should be slow to get angry. That means being kind to your little sister instead of being annoyed by her. I know sometimes when things happen in my life that can seem scary or confusing, it can feel like the road underneath me is about to give way. But even in those moments, I can remember what's true. I can think back to some verses from the Bible. It's so good to remember that God is with us and we can trust God no matter what. You can see why it's so helpful to remember God's words from the Bible. It's important to hear from God so we know the best way to live. It's like we read in Psalm 119.105. Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is a light that guides me. We all face tough decisions in life, but God's word, the Bible, is always available to help us make the wise choices. If you want to let God's word light your way, then think about how you can make a plan to read the Bible for yourself. 
Get in the habit of hearing from God because God's word can light the way for you and those around you. Remember, practice hearing from God. God, thank you for giving us your word, the Bible. Thank you for showing us your truth and lighting the way in our lives so we can live with your wisdom. We know there's so much to discover in your word that will help us live our lives in the very best way. Help each of us to think about how we can spend more time hearing from you by reading the Bible for ourselves. Help us to make a plan to hear from you and put that plan into practice. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's pop quiz time. I'll ask you some questions and you can shout out loud the correct answer based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Okay, question number one. What does Psalm 119 say about God's words being sweeter than? Is God's word sweeter than grape juice? Sweeter than honey? Or maybe sweeter than brown sugar? Yup. Psalm 119 says that God's words are sweeter than honey. Question number two. God's word is like a blank that shows us the way. It is like a blank that guides us. Fill in the blanks. God's word is like a street sign that shows us the way. It is like a traffic light that guides us. Or God's word is like a lamp that shows us the way. It is like a light that guides us. Or maybe, God's word is like a waiter that shows us the way. It is like a menu that guides us. You got it. God's word is like a lamp that shows us the way. It is like a light that guides us. Last question. Everyone should be quick to blink, but they should be slow to blink. They should be slow to get blink. Fill in the blanks. Everyone should be quick to wake up, but they should be slow to shower. They should be slow to get ready. Or, everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. Or maybe, everyone should be quick to answer, but they should be slow to respond. They should be slow to get up. Which one do you think it is? Yes, everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. You all did it. Thanks for playing Pop Quiz with me. Hello kids, welcome to another game time. Our monthly theme is training camp. Therefore, we will play a game related to sports and I will name the game as What to What. There will be a picture of a tool and I want you to answer in which sport game the tool is usually used. So are you ready? Let's begin! Oh, it's something very long. Do you think this tool is used for A. Javelin throw or B. Pole vault? Yes, the answer is Javelin throw. Number two. Oh, is that a horse? In which sport can we use this? A barrel racing or B, chess. Yes, it's a piece from a chess game. Oh, this one is easy. It looks very heavy though. In which sport can we use this? A, bodybuilding or B, calisthenics. You gotta lift that heavy barbell during your bodybuilding training. Time for number four. It's another easy one. In what game do we usually use this? A. Basketball game or B. American football game? Of course it's basketball. 
Ah, you might guess this one easily. I've never tried this game my whole life. Is it A, bowling, or B, volleyball? Yes, it's bowling, and it looks so much fun. Number six. Wow, have you ever worn this one? It's called a G. What martial arts require you to wear this? A. Kung Fu or B. Karate? Yes, karate, and it looks so much fun too. Number seven, let's see. Oh, it's a helmet. But too bad there's no motorcycle in the option. Is it A, cycling, or B, Formula One? Yes, the helmet is used for a Formula One race. On to the last one. What sport game is this table used for? Is it A, billiard, or B, table tennis? And the answer is billiard. You did great, friends. Until we meet again, bye. Hi, IS kids. It feels so great to be here again. Well, now. Let's read the memory first of this man together. Are you ready? Let's do it. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, verse 8. That's great. Now let's read it together one more time. Ready? Okay. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, verse 8. Well, you know what? This verse has some great things to say as we learn to practice hearing from God. How do you practice something or train for something? Mm -hmm. If you want to practice and train in being godly, the best way to do that is to see how Jesus lived and follow his example. When Jesus wanted to hear from God, he went to a quiet place and pray. God guided him and gave him strength many times. So we can do that too. We can hear from God through prayer, reading the Bible, talking with other believers, and so many more. There are many ways to practice hearing from God. So, let's keep that practicing, I ask kids.